In this video here, we are going to start looking at the next part of our subdivision design. In the previous videos, we've created our alignments, we've graded our road, we've graded in the lots, we've created a knuckle, we've created a cul-de-sac, and we're working on design. We have some assemblies and profiles and whatnot. So the next steps in the subdivision design here is worrying about groundwater or rainwater and sanitary flow, and we're going to get into our underground utilities. So with our rainwater, we're going to work on our storm design. We're going to size our manholes and catch basins. We're going to worry about any rain that falls during a storm. Sanitary flow will be what's coming from your house. And we're going to find out that these flows are the different sizes and we need different size pipes. And possibly in another video, we are going to look at our uh, fresh water coming from the city. The sanitary and storm will be pre uh, gravity drain pipes. And our water is going to be built under the pressure pipes. And again, these are probably going to be two different videos just to the sheer amount of size. I have created previous videos. This was about two or three years ago about gravity drain and setting up your pipe network, setting up your parts list, setting up styles and whatnot for these actual objects that we're going to be creating now. So in my tool space under my settings tab, as I've done these videos previously, I'm not going to go into great detail on this. I'm just going to quickly show you what I have. Having things set up beforehand is going to make your design easier. So under my parts list, I have a parts list for sanitary and I have a parts list for storm. I'll quickly take a look at my sanitary parts list under the pipes. And if we need to add another one, it's as simple as right click on your parts list name, add a family select the one you want and hit OK. Then it will bring down a drop down. So in this case, PVC pipe, we can right click add a part size. We could choose the part size we need 250, 300, 375, etc. And add that size, make sure to set up your material, make sure to set up your radiuses, if you have curve radiuses, etc. Be careful with these add all size buttons and I'll show you why under the manhole section, but they can add a lot of items in your drawing that you just do not need. If I expand PVC pipe size, I've added 200, 250, 300, 375 PVC pipe. Now the sanitary flows coming from your house are not going to be nearly the same volume or anywhere close to the same volume as what is during a rainstorm. We're going to have maybe 10 liters per second, and we can do calculations for that, which we're not going to do in this video, but we can calculate all the sanitary flow coming out of our subdivision. We can calculate all the storm flow coming out of our subdivision. In this case, we would only need 200, 250, 300, 375, and really for a small area of the size, all we need is 200, the minimum pipe size. And this is for the city of Calgary. They have minimum sizes for sanitary and storm. We can go look those up but we would use that minimum. Under structures, I have a null structure, which is a very important structure. If we have a curved pipe and we need to connect it to a straight pipe, we would use a null structure so it doesn't put an actual manhole in. And I have a manhole itself. Now, when I said be careful of the add all sizes, I'm gonna go turn all these on. Whereas before I had one, I'm gonna click okay. And Civil 3D has now given me the better part of probably 500 manholes to choose from, all different diameters, all different frame sizes. So be careful with that all, add all size button, only really add in what you need. My storm parts list, slightly different. Under pipes, I've got PVC pipes, the same four sizes. And then anything over 400, I've gone to concrete pipe sizes all the way up to 1500. Now there are definitely more concrete pipe sizes because storm flow, when we start accumulating areas and getting into the larger pipes, we get more and more and more. It's not uncommon to see a meter and a half diameter storm pipe in your subdivision, whereas you only have a 250 diameter sanitary pipe. So that was under pipe networks. Under the pipes itself, we have pipe styles. My sanitary just displays as orange, it's double line. My storm is green double line. And then I got some general rules set up just to length, check, cover, and slope. Make sure my pipe's deep enough. However, each single piece of pipe, each different size of pipe is going to have a different minimum slope. So you might have to create multiple rules. Got some label styles. I got some table styles. 
My structure styles, I got catch basin. There's my null, sanitary manhole, start manhole. Again, these just display differently. A few different structural rule sets. Got some label styles, table styles. Just make sure everything's set up before you begin. Now, when we're trying to figure out where our groundwater is flowing or where the rainwater is flowing, in general, where I design a catch basin can only handle about one hectare of land area before we have to put in either a double catch basin or split the area up because we have a constrained pipe size. We can only fit so much water into that catch basin itself. So there's a couple ways of doing this, figuring out where your water's flowing. We can go under surface style and turn on our slope areas. And I'm just gonna make sure they are not super massive, which they are. I'm gonna change those to maybe one meter. This will show you point, uh, have arrows pointing where the ground, where the water's flowing or the surface is flowing. So if a raindrop lands here, it's gonna to go to the road. It's gonna go into this curb and gutter. It's gonna flow down the curb and gutter around the corner and the flow will carry it down to here. Now, some of these arrows are pointing almost straight perpendicular. So there's another tool under surfaces, utilities, water drop. So I'm gonna select my surface. I'm gonna hit okay. And this simulates the same thing. However, when I click, water is going to go here and ignore all these. It's gonna to go to the curb and gutter. I'm gonna hit escape. And escape doesn't work for me. Oh, there it does. So I'm going to click on this polyline, 3D polyline. It's going to show me that water is flowing down the corner around and is stopping in this location. Yes, I know I have a whole bunch of other points that came with that first one, but overall it's going from here down to here. So I'm going to run the water drop again, and hopefully I can hit escape after this. And I'm going to click in a few spots in my subdivision. And as we see between here, if I click here, it goes to the left or to the right. If I click here, it goes off to the left. So all the water on the left side drains to a low point that's right here. If I click in the road, it drains to a low point that's here. If I click here, it drains to a low point down there. Same with up here. If I click in here, all this water from the entire right side of the subdivision goes to the low point in our cul-de-sac and again i've lost i can't hit escape on the water drop all right i have my escape back so i'm not going to use the water drop command anymore but this just shows you that we can see where things are draining so i will for sure have a catch basin in this location at the end of this line i will for sure have a catch basin down here I will also for sure have a catch basin right here. Now I'm gonna select similar on these and just erase them because we really don't need them. They're just gonna take up space in your drawing. And I'm gonna just draw a quick boundary here to find out how much water is flowing from this large area to the smaller one here. So I'm just gonna draw a quick boundary around the outside. Your center line of your road will be your high point. It is a defining boundary line. And then from about this lot line, we'll just cut it off here, the center of our cul-de-sac, and then I will close this off. So all the water that lands, all the rain that lands in this area wants to flow to this low point. So I'm gonna check the properties of this line. And we see that it is almost one hectare in size. This is approaching the maximum size. Depending on the amount of rain we get, this might even be too large for this one area itself. So this is where we need to use some thinking. We have a catch basin here. We have a catch basin here. Do we want to take it so we add a catch basin? There will be a swale at the back of these lots. Do we want to add a catch basin here? Can we add one? For sure we can add one. However, in this case, we would need another manhole. As we have a catch basin here, we can additionally add one on this side to cut the flow off. And we can take this area that's in blue here and funnel it into this catch basin here. 
Now the area I've highlighted here is about 3000 square meters. And if I just erase that, draw another quick polyline from here to about here, go through the midpoints of these lots. Just to show you the area roughly down here. And again, just drawing these boundaries comes with practice, comes with time. I'll close that. However, I should add a vertex from there. This is about, like I said, 3,000 square meters. So we can add another catch basin right here to handle 3,000 square meters. And that leaves this area to be 7,000 square meters. So we have cut our area in almost a third here by adding one catch basin where there's already an existing manhole. So before we start drawing our pipes, we need to look at what our city standards are. So this is a residential road. We have sanitary on the left, 5.75 from the left-hand side of this detail. We have storm on the left as well, 7.75 or 0.25 off center line. So 16 divided by two is eight. Eight minus 7.75 is 0.25 meters off center line. So we can utilize that 0.25 meters off center line. Sanitary will be 2.25 meters off center line. And same with our water will be 2.25 meters off center line. Alternatively, you can just offset your property line here. So picking which side of the road sanitary goes on or storm goes on doesn't really matter. We can have it on the right. We can have it on the left. Just Keep in mind that water needs to be on the opposite side. We cannot put them side by side. I'm going to pick just the right-hand side and the right-hand side for this, for my storm. And I'm going to offset my alignment by 0.25. When you offset an alignment, it turns into a polyline. Cannot offset that object. Okay, so we will have to draw probably a polyline for that one. So I'm going to draw a polyline from here to here. And we will not actually draw, we won't put pipes around the arc. We're going to square this off. So I will fill it radius of zero. If it's going to let me fill it, these two, yes. And then I will offset that by 0.25. So that is where my storm line is going to go. While I have these, I'm going to offset for my sanitary as well. So I'm going to offset the center line 2.25 on the right. And I'm going to offset this 2.25 on the right. I will do the same for my water on the left. So offset this to the left and this to the left. Now I'm going to change the colors of these just so I can tell them apart. Water, I'm going to make blue. Sanitary here, I'm going to make, we'll just make it orange. Color 40 or 30, sorry. And then storm, sorry, this was um, storm, not sanitary. I'm going to make green. And sanitary, I'm going to make orange. Color 30. I'm just going to extend these to where they need to go. So we know where we're tying into. And then trim. So I've laid out the locations of my pipes. I'm going to turn these slope arrows off. We don't need them anymore. We have sanitary 2.25 to the right, we have storm 0.25 to the right, and we have water 0.25 to the left, which matches our detail here. We wanna keep water as far away from sanitary as possible. So that is why the storm is in the middle. Sanitary will be on, in our case on the right, water will be on the left. It doesn't matter if you choose left or right, but you need to use some thinking of when we start placing in manholes or catch basins. So if my sanitary was on this side, I have a catch basin here, 
with a pipe possibly intersecting my sanitary manhole because that would be right here or right here. So use some thinking, which side do we want to place these on? We want to have the least amount of conflicts as possible. So now that I've located this, I'm going to go under my prospector tab under pipe networks. I'm going to right click on network and create network pipe network by layout. I'm going to name this my sanitary layout. I'm going to choose my sanitary parts list. And again, this is easier to set up now than it is to fix it after you have all your pipes in my surface name. This is going along with the rules and is also going to check to make sure our pipes are deep enough underground. I'm going to choose my lock grading surface because I've combined everything together. My alignment name. Now this one is hard to remember to change as we go through, but when we show a pipe, we want to show what alignments it's attached to. So we have a station and an offset. It makes it easier to build. I'm going to choose my main through road and hopefully I remember to change it when we go up into our cul-de-sac. I'm going to choose my label styles. I'm just going to go name only right now and pipe label plan name only. I don't really care about which labels I have right now. They're easier, easy enough to change. I'm going to hit okay. It's going to bring up our network layout tools. The very first button we have is pipe network properties and absolutely make sure you go into here. Utility type sanitary. This will make a difference if you export it into the storm and sanitary analysis to do your calculations. However, this is a small enough site that I'm not going to do that. Layout settings, make sure everything here set up is correct. Our alignment name, surface name, parts list, label styles, profile. None of this gets set up. So you'll have to go and add things manually after. So I want name only uh, all info profile labels, pipe label plan, sanitary. We don't have a crossing pipe label style section. Make sure this is set up. It's easier now. Like I said, I'll hit OK. The second button here, we can change what surface this is reading off of. Right now it's on lot grading surface. We could make it display read off something else. The third button is your alignment. So we can change the alignment as we're going through. And when I hit the cul-de-sac, I will choose cul-de-sac entrance road. But we're going to leave it like that for now. The fourth button is your parts list. So we'll open up the parts list you're using. We can go in, we can add sizes, we can remove sizes, we can change things right from here. Another thing I should mention about your parts list is make sure the styles are set up properly. Make sure the rules are set up. Make sure everything is set up before you go and draw your pipes because it is a pain in the butt to do it after. You have to do them one by one if you don't set this up now. So I have my parts list. The next drop down to select my structure, either I draw a null structure or I draw a manhole along with my pipe size, 2, 250, 3, 375. And you can change these while you are working through the project. So we can draw a pipe, then change it for the very next one. The next button, insertion points, connection points, etc. We can draw pipes and structures, pipes only, structures only. We can toggle upstream or downstream. Now this will change your labels depending on how you've drawn it. I usually draw from the bottom up, so I want to toggle upslope. We can delete a piece, delete an object. We have a Vista viewer so we can see things, but we have nothing right now. And we have an undo button. So I'm going to choose my parts. I want to draw my manhole. I want to draw a pipe size. I want to draw pipes and structures. Now we will have a tie in down here from the city existing, existing infrastructure. So we might already have a manhole here. We might need to tie into some elevations, etc. I'm going to snap to the endpoints of everywhere. I'm going to need a manhole. And I do not know if I need one in here yet. However, we can add one in after. So I'm going to draw those four in. And I'm going to hit escape once. If my escape button works and there, 
There, uh, we, it's escaped now. So I'm gonna select this pipe now, and I'm gonna see how long it is. So 116 meters, this is okay. The, min the maximum distance between manholes in the city of Calgary is 185. So I'm okay with that. I'm gonna go and draw the pipes into my cul-de-sac now. And I'm gonna change my alignment. I want this to be the cul-de-sac entrance road. I'm gonna draw pipes and structures. And I'm gonna come down to this manhole here. Now, if we hover over a pipe, we have this little grip that pops up, this glyph, so two squares and two lines. This will break your pipe and place another manhole there. If we hover over the manhole, we see a little glyph that's a circle with four lines. This will add a pipe to this manhole. So if I click, we see we didn't get an additional structure, but it attached to that manhole. I'm gonna come up into my cul-de-sac and I'm just gonna to snap to the end of this line and hit escape again. Now, where these end in the cul-de-sac will depend on your jurisdiction. However, I just generally put them around the center. If we have to move them, just simply extend them. Use your extension O snap and place it where you need it. So that was just drawing in your sanitary lines quickly. We're gonna draw in our storm lines now. So I'm gonna close the layout tools here. I'm gonna create a new pipe network by layout. I'm gonna name this storm layout. My parts list will be storm, surface will be lot grading, main through road. I want name only plan labels, name only. We'll hit okay. And again, I'm going into my layout tools, setting up my profile. All info profile labels, pipe label, profile, storm. And we'll hit OK. All these options will stay the same for now. However, we now have additional options. We have catch basins and manholes. I'm going to start drawing upslope with a manhole. And I'm going to choose probably just go to concrete pipe size right away. We're not sizing this in these videos. However, storm flow will be a lot larger. Pipes and structures. I'm going to snap from here. to there, go through my knuckle and to the end of that line. And hit escape again. And give it a minute to escape. And then I'm gonna change my alignment to my cul-de-sac entrance road and draw this last pipe up into my cul-de-sac. Now, we do not have a catch basin at the top here. So why am I putting a manhole into my cul-de-sac, a storm manhole? We have no water flowing from here into this manhole down. What we do need to worry about in most areas is groundwater. There will be groundwater. You're going to have weeping tile around any house. And your foundation is generally two to three meters below ground. And the city I live in, they tie that weeping tile into the storm line. So the weeping tile around your house gets tied into your storm line. So I've drawn a storm pipe into my cul-de-sac where it looks like I don't need one. I may not. There may not be a groundwater issue here. However, we'll just assume that there is. And we're going to tie this, these houses into this storm line. I'm going to change this now to my catch basins and I'm going to go to my pipe size. I'm also going to update my alignment back to the main through road. When we're doing catch basins, I am going to toggle it so it's flowing down slope. I mean, you can do upslope, you can do down slope, it's really up to you. I'm gonna draw pipes and structures and we have defined a low point roughly somewhere around here. I'm gonna connect that pipe to my manhole. I'm gonna hit enter. I'm gonna run the command again. And we have a low point roughly around here. We can adjust this after. I'm gonna connect it to my manhole. Now, if I had my sanitary on this side and my storm on this side, 
I may be interfering with the sanitary manhole, which makes this a li- this more difficult because you cannot have a pipe going through a manhole to another manhole. I am again going to draw my two catch basins down here. And in this case, we see I have a problem. So I cannot have this pipe going through the sanitary manhole. And then I'm going to come up here, go from here to here. Now, when we have issues like this, we cannot just move this manhole over because we still have a bend. What I would end up doing is moving the low point in my knuckle here more over here. So that's just a simple go to your knuckle profile. Make sure it's your knuckle profile. It's a knuckle. Yep. And I'm going to move this to the left a bit. We're going to go 20, 30 meters. We'll update the corridor and we'll see where that's at. Okay, my low point's now over here, which works for what I need to do. So I'm going to move this into my low point. So again, just click and drag. We're no longer interfering with that sanitary manhole. Make sure you rebuild your corridor. Make sure all your tie-ins are correct. And your road updates. And then let's confirm that these are actually in the low points. So I'm going to add a water drop. And we'll hit OK. I want one water drop just right in here. Show me where that's going. One water drop right in here. Show me where that's going. One water drop right in here to show me where that's going. And this one, the where structure 11 is here, we don't need to worry about that one because we're defining that as a new point. So I'm going to then take this manhole, if I can, or this catch basin, sorry. And I'm going to move it to the end of that low point. So that's where my structure is. Same with this one here. And same with this one here. My low point is right there. And again, we just generally placed them in. We're, we're fine tuning the location now. So when it comes to tying in your utilities and how to slope your pipes, that will be in the next video. But for this one, we have laid out our sanitary and our storm design. And we've placed all our structures in. We have some general labels. We will take it a step further in the next video.